If you're the owner of a fifth gen Ram, like I am, with the 66 RFE or the 68 RFE transmission, you know that there are some inherent issues with this transmission. So I just bought this truck about three months ago. It's a 2015 Ram 2500, and I bought it with 40,000 miles. I paid $25,000, and honestly, I think it was a pretty good deal because this thing was completely unmolested until I got my hands on it, and I've obviously done a few things, and that's what we're doing today. But even though it had 40,000 miles, there was one big issue. For 40,000 miles, this old guy who took meticulous care of this truck, got it serviced, got all the recalls taken care of. For 40,000 miles, this guy used this truck to tow a fifth wheel trailer. And one of those inherent issues is the transmission running hot. This transmission can run 190 to 200 degrees with regular driving. And what's crazy is, there's only one, not only one, but there's one big reason why this transmission runs so hot. And it's this thermal bypass valve that they put in there, in my opinion, for one freaking reason. And that's for the EPA. To give you, in your 6.4 liter gas guzzling Ram, a fraction of a mile per gallon. It's absolutely ridiculous what these companies do to satisfy the EPA. That thermal bypass valve that they put in right after the torque converter basically bypasses transmission fluid to the cooler, making your transmission fluid run hot. And they don't care. They don't care as long as they can sell their trucks and pass EPA regulations. They don't care. Let me show you how small and simple of an item this is. And then today we're going to go ahead and install it. Now this will be the start of a series that I'm calling, I don't know, Ram upgrades or something along those lines. And this will be the first one. So let me show you what this little thing looks like and how ridiculous it is. This is it right here. And normally there's a thermostat that runs down and then it bypasses fluid so that it doesn't run through your cooler. How freaking stupid, right? You can pick one of these up. This is full billet aluminum. It's made by a company called PPE. I did get it off Amazon, but I paid about $85. So if you're interested in one like this, I'll put a link down in the description. I know there's some that are cheaper that are like $39, but I've looked into them. I've read the forums. They tend to leak and you don't want to take that chance because factory Mopar transmission fluid is like $51 for five quarts. It's ridiculously expensive and you really want to use the factory Mopar transmission fluid. So spend a little more money, get one that's a little nicer. They make some that are a hundred, hundred plus dollars. I don't think you need to spend that much for the name. We're going to find out today, but this one got great reviews. So this is the one that we're going to try. So let's get under here and uh, get this project going. So I did jack up the truck just a little bit. I don't think it's completely necessary, but this truck, my truck has running boards that I installed, but there's also these I-beams that run underneath there. There's these I-beams right here that run pretty close to the ground and it makes it a little hard to squeeze up underneath there. And that's right where you're gonna need to be to get access to the valve, which we'll show you in a minute, but it's just right up under there. And I also wanted to use this little oil pan because uh, it's quite large and it allows me just to pump the oil right out. There's a hand pump on there. Um, I picked this thing up for like $120 off Amazon. I'll also put a link to this if you're interested. It has helped me keep a lot of oil off my driveway and it rolls around and you can pump oil into it and out of it and it'll fit right under the truck, especially with it jacked up. So got the truck jacked up a little bit. 
we're gonna roll the oil pan underneath and we're gonna start pulling off this thermal bypass valve. All right, so here we are underneath the truck. Here is the piece right here. And as you can see, it's pretty exposed. I mean, right there's the, the outside of the truck. We're on the passenger side. And this thing is one of the lower hanging parts on the truck. You have your oil pan right here and you can't quite see it, but your transmission pan's right there. So a couple issues, one, it can get debris and stuff like that stuck in it. But the other major problem is that right back here is your torque converter. And like I said, the torque converter is very likely to uh, drop metal shavings. And when it does, those metal shavings run right into this thermal, by thermal bypass valve. And that can cause that thermostat to get stuck closed. So let's go ahead and start taking it apart here. These little clips, I find best just to take a screwdriver and get up underneath them and pop them off. As you can see right there, we're just going to pop those off. And then underneath there, there's going to be a couple little metal clips. We will pop these little pins out. Now, speaking of the torque converter being right back there, but one thing I'm going to do is when I pull these out, I'm going to let it drain into that pan for a little while. And I'm going to try to get any, I'm going to try to drain the torque converter completely because there actually is no drain on the torque converter on this truck. So I'm going to let as much fluid as I can drain out because I have 10 quarts of new Mopar transmission fluid. And if you drop these little pins that are in here, don't worry too much about it because the new one actually comes with, with a couple of pins. But there you go. It looks like this right here. And... They're just like little C-clamps. They fit right on there. So we'll do it again on the other one. All right, now that we got the C-clips off, I just need to loosen these bolts. No, once you loosen these, fluid will start flowing. And I am going to use two crescent wrenches. One I'm gonna to use to actually hold on to the thermal bypass, get my hand out of the way like that. And then the other one I'm going to actually put on the line or on the, the bolt and I'm going to turn and the reason I'm going to do that is so I don't twist and torque the lines. It'll help hold this steady and this is the point where you'll want some kind of bucket or something underneath because it is going to start draining. All right, so as you can see, we got those two lines off over there and this line right here off, but this one up here is proven to be a little bit more of a bear because uh, you've got the frame on the right side, the transmission on the left, a uh, whole bunch of crap up on the top, and then this line right here on the bottom. So there's really nowhere to fit anything into. I did end up undoing this line mount right here um, because that gives a little bit more wiggle room on the lines and gave the ability, gave me the ability to pull this backwards so that I could get it off of these lines here. Uh, some trucks have rubber lines which makes it a little bit easier to move this around my truck does not it's all aluminum lines so i believe that's the reason i had to undo this mount right here but this one uh, i'm gonna have to try to figure out a tool to get up in there i may actually even have to cut an old crescent wrench we'll see uh, i'm gonna try a few different things and then i'll get back to you when i figure out exactly what worked so we got the old one out and it is the original chrysler mopar part and this is how the new one's going to go in. I just wanted to take a second to show you the difference. Check this out. So when you look at the inside of the old one, you can see that thermal bypass valve in there. It's got kind of a little spring around it. And that thing is what gets stuck up and then, or stuck down and won't open. And then basically continues to push hot transmission fluid around your truck. And even if it doesn't get stuck, it is not good that you have a thing that is bypassing your transmission cooler it makes no sense so this is the new one and as you can see in the new one there is no valve in there it just allows the transmission fluid to flow completely through and that is what we're wanting to see happen here we want the transmission to flow freely so that it can continually be cooled off we don't want any bypassing of our transmission cooler. We don't want any slowing down of the transmission fluid because we bought a freaking 6.4. So we don't care about gas mileage. If we care about gas mileage, we would get a turbocharged four cylinder. We wanted a truck 
truck, not a car truck, not a four cylinder truck, a 6.4 liter Hemi. So don't limit the flow of transmission fluid to give us a very minute, minimal amount of extra gas mileage. All right, so it is done. Let me flip the camera around. I'm gonna show you what it looks like and I'm gonna show you exactly what I had to do to get it hooked up because as easy as it seemed like it should have been, it was a little bit of the a little bit of a pain. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So the first thing is we already talked about, I had to undo this uh, mount bolt right here to give me some wiggle room on the lines. And then there's also a little clip right here that holds the lines uh, just kind of by the oil pan there. I had to undo that clip to give me a little bit of wiggle room and I had to take the little metal C-clips out to make it easier for me to push these in because these aluminum lines just don't give you a whole lot of wiggle room. And I had to start with getting these lines popped in first. And then once I got these popped in, I put the C-clips in. And then from that point, I lined these up and got these threaded in. Now, yeah, I got a little cut on my finger there, bashed it. But I did kind of get these pre-lined up so that they were in position where they needed to be, but I did not start to screw them in yet because I needed as much room as possible to get these clamped in because these lines here, they have a little more give than what these do here. And also where the lines run up back there, I took a crowbar and kind of moved them forward a little bit just to help get them popped in here. Uh, that was something that helped me out. You may not have to do that. So once I got these in, I ended up threading these in. And to get the top one threaded in, I actually cut the back off of a crescent wrench, just an old Pittsburgh one I had, so that I could have room up there because this is the shortest one I had. And pretty much any full-size one bumped the, the top of the headers up there, and there just wasn't room to go to either side. So... Cutting this crescent wrench gave me the ability to tighten this one up uh, because uh, to get that one in, I actually had to tighten this one up first and then move on to this one. It was just the order it had to be done. I tried multiple different ways. I put this thing on and removed it about three times in the process uh, because I started with these and then thought I needed to start with these, so I took it off and start with these and then realize that these were threaded in there was no way i was going to get these popped in over here so came to the realization that i had to start with this side and then get the threads threaded in afterwards and that's pretty much uh, what worked for me uh, you can see it sits up there just exactly like the old oem one did i've ran the truck now for about 15 minutes in neutral um, i can feel that this is a little bit warm uh, these these lines are definitely warm up here so there has been some fluid running through and it does not look like there's any leaks uh, we'll check back after a drive and see what happens but so far so good and with that said i am gonna get the truck off the jack stands take it for a drive make sure there's no leaks if this helped you out or if you like this content do me a huge favor hit that subscribe button i'm trying really hard to hit 500 subscribers before winter it would be awesome if I could monetize this channel, it sure would help me I continue to make more videos. Even if I was just making a few pennies, it would be nice to know that, hey, I'm making a little something off the time and effort I'm putting into these videos. But for you guys, let me know if you have any questions, if you decide to do this mod, if you find that it helped you out. And stay tuned because I'm going to have a whole playlist of uh, Ram 1500, 2500 Cummins uh, five, seven and six, four, uh, modifications that I would recommend doing for this truck. So yeah, thanks a lot. Take it easy till next time. I'll see you later.